there is really no uh, controversy on it. The Bible is very clear about it. Uh, I think uh, basically the controversy is our interpretation of what the Bible is saying. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that Titan uh, um, is a Jewish practice. Uh, it's uh, something that came from uh, the whole system of Jewish practice that, that came from the Mosaic law and so on. Um, along with uh, Titan, we also have the first fruit, we have the Passover um, celebrations, we have circumcision, we have um, uh, uh, offering of burnt offerings, uh, sin offerings, and so on. So uh, the, the main point is this, whoever wants to offer a tithe should be ready also to go along and do every other Jewish practice. That's just the um, discussion there. Now, um, I, I could shed more light on this subject if you okay. Now, the, the thing now is this. The main controversy has been that um, by God's mercy and his providence, he has given somebody a voice to be able to uh, tell the world or to tell Nigerians about the uh, the falsehood of practicing, I mean, of giving a tithe today. Uh, the young man called um, Freeze uh, recently began to speak against it publicly. And there have been a lot of uh, uh, reactions to it. And surprisingly, pastors that normally would not speak when they are criticized are speaking. We have had uh, uh, responses from Adeboye. We have had from Oedipo. We have had from um, Ashimolowo just recently. We have had from Adefarasi, from... Um, um, Apostle Suleiman, so many of them, you know, so it shows clearly that uh, there is, there is a, uh, um, they, 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 people are hearing about this thing and so on, and it's important that we make uh, the position on tight clear. Now, tithing is not a Christian practice, it's a Jewish practice. Um, it was instituted by God in the Bible as provision for the um, uh, the ecclesiastic uh, system in the Jews in those days. It's just like in any system where you have uh, a worshipping people, people who worship Jehovah in those days. God said that, okay, those people who are leading the worship, the priests and the Levites, should be provided for through the tithes. So, uh, in those days, the people will go to the farm, they will walk the farm, they will Earn, I mean, they would get their crops and get their seeds and everything from the farm. But the leaders, the people who were leading worship, were not going to the farm. So when they bring, okay. So the 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 system in those days, they, they, we had the, the the Jews had this system where they had the um, their ecclesiastic, that's their pastors, their leaders in worship who earned their um, living from the tithes from the tithes in fact in numbers if i'm not uh, correct yes now in numbers chapter 11 god makes it abundantly clear that he had provided the jews uh the the levites and the priests with the tithe that the tithe will be their sustenance in our own parlance now the tithe will be their provision or their salary so there's no argument about it at all however uh, I believe through the, 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 the ages, because Christianity is 2,000 years ago, I mean years old, and um, after the first century, that's the first uh, 100 years of Christianity, we began to have the influence of um, the papal influence on uh, Christianity generally. That's to say, the Christianity that came from Rome. Uh, uh, Paul, um, Peter had migrated to Rome at some point, and the, 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 the central... Okay, Rome was the center of the world then, was the capital of the advanced world then. And it made sense that Christianity would come from there. Now, uh, the, 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 the papal system also came from, from Rome, and they became the head of the church. Ab about that time, they began to suggest that in, in, uh, just as we have it in the Old Testament, people could give 10% of their, of their agrarian um, produce to the church, and that was practiced for a while, and then it, it continued, I think, probably even into the medieval times. But surprisingly, the Catholic Church that started tithing today do not emphasize it, even though they do practice it as for, for, from what I learned, but they do not emphasize I was born a Catholic, and I never heard anybody ask anybody to give a tithe, you know. Uh, the, um, the Protestant churches that came out of the 
um, Catholic Church at some point also began to collect 10% uh, from people, insisting that people could give a tithe. At some point, it wasn't something they insisted on. It was more or less like a suggestion, saying, okay, there's a gathering of God's people, and um, uh, the, the pastors have to be provided for. Why don't we... Uh, give 10% of our income to support these people. And that was how the whole idea started. But you know, when something good comes and people are earning from it, there's a tendency for that thing now to become something like a law. Yeah, and so that is why by the time we were entering into the 20th century and into the 21st century, the titan had become something like a law. When I became a Christian in 1998, I remember that the person who... Uh, uh, spoke to me about Christianity because I didn't know anything. He told me that there are some things that were very vital. He said you have to pray, you have to go to church, and lastly he also mentioned that you have to tithe. So by that time, tithing had become more or less like a law. However, for me personally, by the year 2013, I had to begin to um, investigate what the tithe was all about. And by the time I checked through the whole Bible, I found out that there was no such thing, there was no demand on, uh, on, um, on Christians to give a tithe. Uh, it's clear, if we're going to have to give 10% of our salaries or 10% of whatever we earn, then we're going to have to also practice every other Jewish practice. But because we are not, as Christians, we're not bound to keep the Jewish law, at the same time we're not bound to give a tithe. So what our um, freeze is doing is by the mercies of God. And um, even though he's not a trained minister, a lot of them have held it against him that he's not, uh, he's not a pastor. Yes, even though he's not a trained minister, the truth of the matter is that when God begins to do a thing, when he begins to do a revival, he doesn't use the... Um, the establishment. He doesn't use the, the thing. He usually really uses the down and cast. The, the Jesus was saying once to the Pharisees, he says that if these people do not offer him praise, then he's going to cause for stones and rocks to offer him praise. And we have also seen a situation where when the, uh, when the, when the um, prophets who were supposed to speak the truth to a nation were not doing it, like Balaam, when he refused to do it, God used a donkey to rebuke the mad prophet. So if Frizz today is rebuking pastors and speaking against them, it is ordained of God because that's God's system. It has always been a consistent, that's the way God does his thing. The Bible talks about in Solomon, there was a time in the days of Solomon, when Solomon rebelled against God. He was put in there. Uh, Solomon was the son of David, and David is not a small person as far as Bible characters are concerned. So the, Solomon was a son of David, but he sinned against God, he rebelled against God. And as punishment against his rebellion, God raised up people against him. So God always raises up people against a system that is rebellious against him. Titan is a rebellious practice. It doesn't have any place in Christianity. However, and I must note this, however, it is God's desire that his work be provided for. And it is incumbent on Christians, and I'm talking about born-again Christians, to give a part of their income to wherever they fellowship, whether it's a church or a fellowship, to as a support for it so that the people who are working either full-time or part-time will have uh, provision. However, even in that, even though God requires that it's a demand on us, God never said it must be a 10%. Rather, what he said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, he said it must be a free will offering. There must be no coercion. As, uh, the minute your giving becomes cohesive and somebody is... Um, is um, putting a, a demand on you or trying to press a cost on you and telling you that if you do not give then something evil is going to happen to you then that type of giving is become cohesion and that is not God's will for uh, us as um, people of God. I was going to ask you yes. this, uh, you know your reaction to the reaction of pastors to these some have placed courses on anybody who doesn't who doesn't tax. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you well, it, <laughs> uh, it's it's. I think it is laughable, but although 
For how many years now? This 2017, I've not tightened since March 2013. When I got my salary for March 2013, I didn't give anybody a tight. Okay? Now, between March and the, uh, 2013 and the close of March, to, uh, December 2013, it was hell personally for me. Why? Because it was a deliverance process for me personally. Uh, it wasn't easy. And most of the time, it, what you're going to hear is people will be saying you're cursed. People will be saying you're going to lose your job. People will be saying all sorts of, of things. Later that year, my child developed asthma. And he was sick. And there was a tendency for me to think that my child was um, being um, um, afflicted because I did not tight. But it was also very easy for me to take care of that uh, lousy kind of thinking. Why? Because another child was sick when I was tightening. So, I mean, I said, okay, fine. I, I'm, I'm being devoured when I was tightening. I'm being devoured when I'm not tightening. Apparently, tightening has nothing to do with uh, a sick child. You know, tightening has nothing to do with whatever evil that comes our way. As Christians, our lives are dictated by God. They are ordered by God. It's not something that is, it's not what you give that determines what you get we are children of God and if we are children I have children I cannot base my provision for my children based on what they are doing to me my children can do evil to me but as their father it is my consistent responsibility to provide for them it's my, my responsibility to make sure that things work out for them they are provided for and that so the important thing here is not a giving of tight or not giving of tight the important thing here is this are people children of god the minute they are children of god god takes care of everything at some point children grow to a point of maturity and they realize that okay now we're earning some money and we must begin to provide for our parents and so children of god also get to some point and they realize that okay what we're earning we can give to support the church we can give to support god's people but it must never come by cohesion it's, 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 it's madness. I think it's foolishness. I'm, I'm trying to constrain my words to use so that, I, I mean, a lot of people revel this man so that I don't get on their nerves. But it's, it's, it's just foolishness. Children of God are children of God. The children of Israel were those who were under either when they obeyed the law, they received a blessing. When they disobeyed the law, they get a curse. That is Deuteronomy 28. That was based on the old law. The children of God are blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, We are seated uh, uh, with Christ in heavenly places. Our sitting with Christ is not based on giving of tight or not giving of tight. It is based on the fact that we are God's people. We are elect of him. We are chosen by him. And, we are and the very fact that we are God's people. We are God's children. We have a blessing. There are no causes on God's children. And you see, when people begin to talk, they begin to talk about the fact that they are Christianity. Because my Christianity doesn't have any cause. If their Christianity contains causes and blessings, then there's a problem with that Christianity. It, you, should, you should hold that Christianity to question because the christianity that is saying okay when 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 the christianity that is saying that when you obey then you get a blessing and when you disobey then you get a cause that christianity should be held suspect and for me that's one of the reasons why i do not go to these churches because i mean after a whole six day work uh, i i labor myself at work and then i come to church on sunday and somebody is threatening me with causes i mean that person is not well you know, so please, I, I, I will, I'm using this opportunity. There's nobody, don't, nobody is, there is nobody that is, is incumbent upon to give any tithes to anybody. Okay? Whatever you earn at your own time, look at your surrounding. Okay? There are some people who probably, and they are God's people. Maybe they are not committed in a church yet. But they see, number one, maybe the immediate need in their life is their parents. They need to provide for their parents. They should do that. Some other people look around and they say, okay, there are needs. There are children that are off school. Uh, they, they, they are, in fact, in Nigeria right now, we have a, a, an epidemic. If every working class family can be committed to sponsoring just one child, 
one orphan in school from primary to the universe. And that's what one, one thing my family is doing. When we stopped tithing, we started doing that. You know, just with, we're taking one child and we're sending that child to school. The child would saw him through primary school. Now we're in, in, he's in secondary school. And by God's grace, we'll see him through university. If every working class family can do that, at some point, illiteracy is going to be wiped out in this country. And nobody is going to stand on his pulpit and begin to rain courses on God's people. There's no cost. There's no such thing. And then again, I'm, I must say this, and I think, I think the public are noticing it. Every person who has responded to freeze, every one of them who have responded to freeze have not raised one single scripture to refute his position. One single scripture. All of them have played on sentiments, they have played on emotionalism, they have played, played on blackmail. And there's, I mean, it's, it's so clear. When I stopped tithing in 2013, I met with my pastor, Pastor Shola Kolade of Vinebrand Church, Mokola uh, Ibado. And, uh, you know, I, I, I spoke with him. And in the one or two times that we discussed this, my eventually led to my leaving the church and uh, I'm taking my, my family out of the place. It, 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 when, when I spoke to him, he, Shola Kolade is different from all the other people. He's a very intelligent person. He's very humble, very straight-headed, you know, and he's also a teacher of the word. But even Shola Kolade could not raise a single scripture, a single scripture to refute my position. I have had email interaction with him in which we discussed this thing. And I showed him from scripture that this thing is not biblical. And even himself would not raise one scripture to refute it. Now, what is the problem with Ida Shalakalade and the other system? It is the fact that the church has inherited a tradition that it is finding very difficult to discard. If Titan is taken away from churches today, all these churches that meet on Sunday will close up. All of them, every one of them, they will shut down. And you know what? I think they should shut down because Nigeria, we are having a problem in this country. Every corner, in every square mile in this country, you will have almost 10 churches. What is wrong with us? Are we mad? In this country where we need people to be thinking, where we need people to be productive, where we need people to begin to do, I mean, work. There is no system, there is no country that thrives on religion. It is not done anywhere. And if you go to Denmark, you go to Japan, you go to the U.S., these countries are raging atheist country. They don't believe in God. But these countries believe in work. It is work that produces wealth. It is work that produces money. And if people don't work, if people continue to hold Sunday morning prayer meetings, not Sunday morning now, Monday morning. On Monday morning, you see churches filled to, to the brink. People are going to pray. God will not answer their prayers. It's not, going to, it's not possible. You pray against enemies. You pray against this. You say somebody should fall down and die. And you are not doing what you are supposed to do. It's madness. Okay? So please. It's a very simple thing. There is no fight about it. There is no controversy. And if there is a controversy, it is God that has a controversy with the nations because he has said it in Jeremiah that he has a controversy with the nations. He has a controversy with tithes. The tithe is easy money. And you know where this tithe comes from? You know where it comes from? Okay, I'll tell you. It's very simple. In, in Ibadan, where I come from, there's a, there's a church, I, will, I, won't, I won't mention the name now. The ch there's a church at the junction of uh, Ojuni, Bodija, close to Bodija Market. That church is a very large church. It has bought the factory opposite it and every other land in fact what churches do now i don't know for lagos but in Ibadan, they build they buy property they buy all the land around them why because easy money is coming to them how does this easy money come it is a very simple this thing there's no mathematics about it there's it's not god that is sending the money it's just simple common sense this is where it comes from nigeria is a country that thrives on oil money. We are a country that we earn a lot of money from crude oil. When this crude oil comes in, when this money comes into government coffers, government has committed itself to its workers and so it gives them monthly salaries. 
Are you following me? Okay? So government pays everybody monthly salary, and unfortunately, from what we have learned, many government work, I mean, institutions are not even working as they should. But government is still committed to paying salary, and God bless our government for doing it. Okay? So they pay salary. Now, everybody gets their salary, and at the end of the month, they take what? 10% out of this salary and give it to where? To the church. So at the end of the day, you see a direct, in fact, it's almost direct, from crude oil to the church. From crude oil to the church. The churches are doing nothing to end this money. They are not adding value to society. They are not doing anything but just collecting money directly from their members who are being paid by government. And this money that they are collecting, they now use it to buy properties all over the place they use it to, and of course that's where you begin to have the private jet thing and they, all these silly things that go on around now a commune i mean a country that is working a country that is working will probably have its citizens earning a salary all right but at the same time you will also find that that the people are enlightened enough to use their resources for other things titan is not christian it is jewish However, God expects that Christians, God's people, who are committed to him, should give an amount, whatever amount. It could be 10 naira, 200, 2,000, whatever you want to give. Give it, let it be what you can consistently give to your church to support your church. And they may to find out that they are only using your money properly. Hold them accountable or probably stop giving your money. But nobody is obliged to give anybody 10% anywhere.